Hi, I'm Hillary Russo. Thanks for joining me for the Holistically Speaking Podcast. I'm a certified holistic health coach and havening techniques practitioner, lover of great conversation, and of course, clever wordplay, holistically speaking. So welcome to an empowering place where my guests share their transformational stories of trauma to triumph through health, healing, and humor. It's the ultimate brain candy as we find out who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up. And be kind to your mind. I'm glad you're here. How many times have you been disappointed for not listening to your gut? Wait, let me clarify that. We have two guts, don't we? Our brain, or intuition, and our second brain, the digestive system, the microbiome as it's called. You know, the one that keeps us up all night when we devour that pint of cookie dough ice cream. The one that's screaming fire when we overdo it on the Cinco de Mayo celebrations. Ah, yes, I'm talking about the one that's got us seeing stars and putting out that SOS as we run to the loo. Well, there's a reason this second brain is talking to you. And there is definitely a link between brain one and brain two. It just knows. And so does my guest, Dr. Vincent Pedre. But how did Dr. P go from his own tummy trauma into creating one of the most successful cleansing programs and turning not only his own health around, but that of thousands of people around the world? Get ready for answers to that question and more from listeners like you on this episode of Holistically Speaking. Dr. Pedre, what a joy having you here on Holistically Speaking. Thank you so much for being here. This is. Um this has been one I've been looking forward to for a while. You are basically a my go-to gut health expert, and I've been following you for a number of years. I have a copy of your best-selling book, Happy Gut, and uh, I actually won this book. This book came to me through a contest. So when it was put in my hands, I was like, I got to read this, you know, being in the oh. field. So I, <laughs> I was very happy to get happy gut, but just to share with holistically speaking listeners who we are talking to, Dr. P, uh, he is a functional medicine certified doctor, internist, out of the box thinker, founder of a successful private practice in New York City. And you've helped literally thousands of people, thousands of patients of your own go from being chronically ill to living a very active and thriving life. And as I mentioned, you're a go-to gut health expert and really that bridge between Western medicine and functional medicine or integrative health, which uh, I tend to, to gravitate to holistically, holistically speaking. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, one thing I would love to start with is a lot of times when we see doctors, we don't really think that they have their own story. You know, we think they're there to help us. They're, they're just go to medical school. They practice what they practice. And rarely who's the man or the woman behind the practice and, and the medicine. So, but you yourself are very open about your own personal journey in gut health. And uh, I would love for you to share that with listeners. Yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it takes me back to my childhood. Um, I was on 20 plus rounds of antibiotics mm. during my, from the age of 10 throughout my teenage years. And as a result of that, I had, you know, my microbiome was wiped out. I mean, two mm. to three rounds of antibiotics per year. And it then led to a whole bunch of food reactions. Primarily, uh, the top two were to gluten and dairy. And because of that, I couldn't gain weight. I wasn't absorbing my nutrients. I was probably eating anywhere between three and 4,000 calories a day, like having milkshakes, cereal with milk, ice cream, lots of bread, pastries, cakes. And yet I was rail thin and the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on. And on top of that, I kept getting sick over and over. And sometimes I was so sick that I didn't even respond to antibiotics. Uh, they would have to take me in to the doctor. Um, and I don't think they do this anymore, uh, but they were doing this back in the 80s is uh, giving gamma globulin shots. So when you had a pneumonia, bronchitis, and whatever, throat infection, sinusitis that wasn't clearing, they would give you an injection of pulled globulins uh, from donated blood. And that's how I got through many of these infections. But no one really asked the question, why is his immune system not 
strong enough to deal with these infections? Why does he need so many rounds of antibiotics? And that was kind of my quest was to figure out what's going on. What is it that's making me susceptible to all these infections and what can I do about it? And on top of that, I developed a really sensitive digestive system um, between having you know, just things not sit well in digestion, having to run to the bathroom unpredictably, uh, abdominal pain, bloating. So all the things that anyone that's suffering from gut issues, from irritable bowel syndrome uh, has probably dealt with at one point in time. And also even like mental health issues like anxiety, um, sometimes depression. And, you know, you think that that's due to situation in life, being a teenager, teenage angst, or just early 20s, just trying to figure out life. Uh, but there's a really strong connection between the gut and the brain. Mm. And it wasn't until I started healing all these uh, things. And um, really, when I learned functional medicine after my training as a doctor, that really put me on the path to healing. And I realized that what I thought was going to be my normal for the rest of my life was actually not something I had to live with. Mm. And that really inspired me to work with people on gut health issues. And that's what finally led me to write my book, Happy Gut, because I realized that even though this information is, uh, you know, so in, in many ways, very simple, though the, the gut is a complex system, uh, yet the majority of people don't know this. And they're out there suffering. I mean, 15% of people worldwide suffer from irritable bowel syndrome. And that's just the classification. That doesn't tell you what the underlying cause is. That comes down to over a billion people worldwide suffering from gut issues. Mm -hmm. That's one in, one in seven people. Uh, and probably there's a bigger majority of people who suffer from leaky gut because there are so many interrelated illnesses that can be rooted with leaky gut. So it's a, it's a really big problem. And I think it's becoming an even bigger problem uh, now with our food supply, with stress, with the overuse of antibiotics, all those things are, are really threatening a delicate ecosystem that we evolved with over thousands of years. I mean, they just figured out what the gut microbiome of Neanderthals might have looked like hmm. uh, from digging up fossils. And um, it's just fascinating that this has been going on for thousands of years, this co-evolution hmm. of humans we are we are like a super organism with all of these little microorganisms living inside us whose dna outnumbers our own dna 100 times to 1 and they produce all these metabolic byproducts some of which can be toxic and damaging to the body but uh, others are really helpful and beneficial and in fact uh, the microbiome plays a really key role in our access to antioxidants so mm -hmm. a lot of the antioxidants that we um, get through food need to actually be broken down into smaller molecules that our bodies can absorb. And it's the gut bacteria that do that for us. Yeah. So it's a, it's a really important relationship um, that I didn't realize the significance of until I, I really dove into functional medicine and got on this this path of healing over a decade ago. And you were, you were already a doctor. You were in, a, you know, working on your residency at Mount Sinai and still dealing with some of the battles that you were having. And when you found the functional medicine. Well, just, just imagine like they, they, at Mount Sinai, which is, you know, this is a training program for doctors. Mm -hmm. What they're serving at lunchtime for a science lecture is pizza and Coke. Yeah. And Diet Coke. And maybe some bottled water. And if you were lucky, once a month, they might have a salad. I mean, <laughs> there's there's like a disconnect there yeah. about, you know, like it's it's almost like you're a doctor, but you can eat whatever you want. <laughs> And 
that has no relation. It's almost like here's your diet over here and here's your health and there is no interconnection. And that is the epitome of it is serving pizza to doctors in training at lunchtime that's going to put them into a food coma. And clearly that is not helping to serve how we want to live our own lives. I mean, if you're practicing medicine and the whole idea is like, how are you, how are you able to serve your patients well when you are not living well, you know? I quite agree. And I mean, um, I mean, over the years, like I've even been to Italy where I, I did a summer internship and a doctor was suturing a patient while smoking a cigarette and had the same, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I just couldn't connect with that because I think as doctors, we should be an example mm -hmm. of what we want our patients to, to do. Like, mm -hmm. how can you preach something and then turn around and do the opposite and think you're, you're not invincible. We're also human. You can't get away with things. You can't get away with eating processed foods for an extended period of time. And I think it's really important as health practitioners to be the example that we want our patients to follow. Yeah, it's like going to a dentist that has halitosis. <laughs> Don't yeah, want to do you know, that. Well, Or yellow teeth. Exactly. <laughs> or no teeth. <laughs> well, you know, you touch on a really interesting topic about the brain and the body, you know, and I work in uh, neuroscience with my work in mental health uh, as a havening practitioner. I'm working on my hypnotherapy. And, you know, there isn't a disconnect. There really is a connection. You know, the, we have the brain and we have... Our, our gut, which is the second brain, as you've mentioned, and there, it's not separate. And I, and what you mentioned earlier makes a lot of sense about how it can really wear on your mental health. If you're not feeling good, there's clearly a reason why, and it's it's going to affect our our, our mental state, our emotional well being. Absolutely. I mean, there's a saying in Spanish that says that um, for for children that if um, full stomach, happy heart. And, but it's true that, that the, you know, your digestive system is the, the key to happiness because more serotonin is produced in your gut, your happiness molecule than, than in your brain. And the, the gut and the brain are connected by a very important nerve called the vagus nerve. It's the longest nerve in the body. And it actually has about 60% of its fibers are pointing up from the gut to the brain, giving the brain feedback from the gut. And it happens to have serotonin receptors in those nerve endings by the gut. And so when it gets stimulated with serotonin, then it sends a signal up to the brain and it releases other neurotransmitters like GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and it helps kind of control over excitation in the brain. So we understand that the, the gut microbiome plays a really key role in regulating so many things, including uh, memory formation and cognition, uh, but also your, your state of, of being, as well as the whether your gut is inflamed or not. If you have leaky gut, which leads to inflammation, then that um, eventually leads to a leaky blood-brain barrier and your brain becomes inflamed and an inflamed brain is a depressed brain. Yeah, absolutely. You just mentioned a topic that I'd love to talk about briefly and that definitely is leaky gut. And I have a number of people that wrote in questions to ask you. And of course, that was one question that came up quite regularly as I was reading these about what leaky gut actually is. Is it real? And how do you, how do you remedy this problem? I know that's a big question. Yeah. yeah, well, look, 20 years ago, the science was just really starting to catch up with all this. And thanks to the work of Alessio Fasano, for example, who looked at the role of gluten and gut permeability and found that gluten actually triggered the release of a chemical signal called zonulin that controls the permeability of your gut the same way that a dimmer switch would control how bright your lights are. Uh, the more zonulin you release, then the more permeable 
your gut becomes. And each cell in your gut lining is connected to the other ce- to the next cell by these Velcro-like connections that are these tight junctions. And when your gut becomes leaky, these tight junctions loosen up. So then you have holes through them where you know, things like partially digested protein molecules can get through and you start developing food sensitivities and food reactions as well as inflammation because other toxins from the gut are getting through and activating your immune system. But we've also looked at um, gut permeability uh, at the microscopic level, um, even endoscopically. And they've, you know, that's something that has been proven in science, uh, even though for years, for decades, uh, naturopathic medicine talked about leaky gut, but the science wasn't caught up. So Western medicine looked at that and thought, well, that's nonsense. There's no such thing as a leaky gut. And now we know that there is. And there's actually um, different mechanisms by which you can get leaky gut. Uh, I was, uh, I'm teaching, uh, uh, I've been teaching a webinar on the role of cytolethal distending toxins that are produced by certain types of bacteria that tend to infect people. Oftentimes before IBS begins, they might get an infection with an E. coli, Campylobacter jejuni, Shigella, Salmonella. And these bacteria produce these cytolethal distending toxins, which basically increase gut permeability. And then as a result, you get food sensitivities, food reactions, and all the inflammation that comes with uh, the gut issues. And people might not know like, hey, how do you know that your gut is leaky? You might not know. You know that you react to a whole bunch of different foods or that you, you've got an upset stomach a lot of the time. You have to run to the bathroom. You don't digest your food well. Uh, maybe things sit in the stomach um, and feel like they don't digest well. All of these things can happen when your intestinal lining uh, loses its integrity. Uh, So it's like your border patrol. And it's trying to keep out negative things that are going to um, increase inflammation in the body. I love that you, I love how you put that. It's border control. So is there a way to build a better border and help your gut? Yeah. I mean, Yeah. Uh, And so in that with making good choices, you know, uh, and that's something that I think that you you talk about a lot, especially with your cleanse program about the the care program, rather the cleanse, activate, restore and enhance uh, that these are steps on how you can create a better border. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And first is about cleansing out. So if there's bad bugs in there, getting rid of the bad bugs, Uh, but also cleansing out foods that you might be reactive to, like taking those out of the diet. Because your gut can't heal if it's under a constant storm. So you want to take that storm away. You want to give it time to heal. You want to activate it with the right types of digestive enzymes or pancreatic support. And then you want to restore the gut microbiome, whether through probiotics or prebiotic nutrients. And then you want to enhance the healing of the gut lining using the right types of nutrients like aloe vera, um, deglycerinated licorice, DGL, uh, marshmallow root, slippery elm bark, zinc as well. Zinc carnosine plays a really important role in that. Um, And a lot of people, by the way, are zinc deficient. I do a lot of um, blood testing on my patients. And one of the most common deficiencies I find is uh, zinc deficiency. How important is it to do the blood work, the full blood panels? You know, a lot of there are a lot of people with food sensitivities. And, and I think we tend to go to a place where we think food sem- sensitivity is usually bad foods for you. But you can actually be sensitive to foods that are healthy. Right. Yeah. So having the full blood panel yeah. can be very helpful. Yeah. It can be helpful. I mean, I, I think the, you know, the gold standard is an elimination diet and then careful observation with reintroduction, a phased reintroduction, and seeing how you react to these things. But for patients who need additional confirmation or where you're kind of confused and you're not completely sure what they might be reacting to, then you can go to food sensitivity testing to look further. Ultimately, it really comes down to the gut border. 
um, to healing the border. Because if that border is op- is functioning normally and you're digesting things properly, then you're not going to be exposed to partially digested proteins that are triggering an immune response. So all of this is just signs that you have leaky gut and you've got to work on gut permeability. And you may have to be on a restricted diet for a certain period of time while working on gut permeability. And by the way, I want to say this, um, and I know you work in, in mental health. So I think it's really important to say because everybody's always like, what do I eat? What should I avoid? What supplements should I take? But if you don't get this in order and get your stress in order and start changing the way that you react to stressors in life, meditation, whatever it is, yoga, tai chi, um, positive affirmations, gratitude, if you don't get this in order, you can't trump you your diet and supplements. You can do everything right, but if you're living stressed out, stress is like an attack on your gut, and it's going to continue to perpetuate increased gut permeability and alterations in your gut microbiome. So, you you and that's what I talk about in my book. You know, because I think when I was writing my book, and I think if you look at the history of of you know, diet advice or books that that have food mixed in with them. The history of that in our country is quick fix. Like, just tell me what to do. And when I wrote my book, I mean, I think so, some people got it. Not everybody who read it really got the picture. But my point was, it's not just, yes, it's the diet. Yes, you do this. Yes, you do the gut care program. Um, you but it's a 360 degree, like it's full mind, body, spirit. And that's why even under the cleanse step, I talk about cleansing the mind of negativity and really working on mindset. You know, I think that's a really key, important piece of, of any gut healing journey is working also on the mind and mindset and on how the person reacts to stress and their parasympathetic versus sympathetic balance. Absolutely. And, you know, I started out as an integrative nutrition health coach and I wanted to take it a step further to touch on mental health because I realized that it, you know, you have your primary and secondary foods foods we put in our body are secondary to how we're living our lives and uh, our family, our connection to home and everything. There's that, the wheel, you know, and if we don't get this in check, we're really, we're really going to throw ourselves off. So I'm really happy you touched on that. Or you, or, or you, you do a program for a month, yeah. but because you didn't rewire this, when that month is over, you just go back to your old habits. The people that I have seen be successful and that they write into me are the ones that they go on the program, they discover that certain things just weren't jiving with their bodies, they change their diet, they change their lifestyle, and then they stick with it for years. And their symptoms never come back as a result. Yeah, the quick fix. When they do that. The quick fix is what we see a lot. A lot of these quick diets, the cleanses that are really fast. Who's, who's behind these, you know, the shreds, everything that happens where it's like, Oh, I'm going to lose five pounds or 10 pounds. And it's like, that's great. But how many of those diets do we see people put the weight back on? And then they feel worse. And then it's even more of a struggle because the weight's on plus more weight, plus the mental weight that's heavy on them too. So it's the, it's a combination of those. And, and what I realized when I was really diving into the gut is that a lot of these cleanses or, you know, quick fix diets, they're not really supporting the three pillars of detoxification, which are the liver, the gut and the gut microbiome, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and I could add that there's a fourth pillar to that, which is your skin, like sweating out toxins. So really doing uh, regular exercise, getting into far infrared saunas, like, you know, and that really completes the picture. Do you find that there are certain foods we absolutely, without a doubt, should eliminate from our diets without even question? <laughs> it's uh, the, the, uh, is there a Loaded target question? here? Like, uh, you don't have to uh, mention depending brands. On, depending on who I tell this to. Um, look, uh, there's a lot of arguments pro and against wheat and whole wheat products. 
the thing about weed is that it's been shown that whether you are normal, whether you have celiac disease or you are non-celiac gluten sensitive, which is about 10% of the population, by the way, uh, that gluten in wheat increases intestinal permeability. And it does so even for a nor normal person. And I think when disease manifests, it's like an accumulation of hits over time. Not everyone may end up with, say, an autoimmune disease, which is one of the triggers that can happen from exposure to gluten. Uh, but the possibility is there. So gluten is high up there. You know, especially with our franken wheat, which is way higher in gluten content than it ever was before in the past. And dairy is another big problem for people, you know, because there, there's a big uh, portion of the world population that is lactose intolerant to begin with. The majority of dairy that's being uh, used for milk or consumption is from A1 cows. And the A1 cow has a casein, which is very difficult for us to digest. If it's A2 cows, like from New Zealand, that type of milk is actually easier for our bodies to digest. And we don't develop as many um, immune reactions to that type of casein. And then we can go into, you know, it becomes really nuanced. Like, should you be having, you know, a pasteurized uh, dairy cheese versus a raw milk cheese? You know, there's a lot of benefits to having a raw cheese or having sh sheep or goat milk cheeses instead of cow dairy because it's closer in molecular structure to human milk. Um, and the closest is actually camel milk, which is quite camel surprising. Camel milk? I'm not sure. Yeah. We... <laughs> I haven't camel seen milk. Many, many of those fields. <laughs> yeah, the there's, a, there's actually um, Why is some... That? Uh, there are some uh, providers of camel milk here in, in the U.S. Um, and worldwide, but uh, there's a company that I've worked with called Desert Farms. Um, and that actually, the camel milk has been shown to have a lot of healing properties in certain cases. Uh, so those are some of the top foods. And then you really have to watch out for... You know, I think the, the big argument is organic or non-organic pesticides, genetically modified organisms... Like you really should be steering away from those. And the sad truth is that a big portion of the food supply, like soy and corn in the U.S., more than 90% of it is genetically modified. And we don't know what that does to the gut microbiome. What we do know is that farmers who farm genetically modified crop will spray six times as much pesticide on that than they would on a regular crop. And that pesticide has glyphosate, for example, which has been patented as an antimicrobial. So glyphosate acts as if it's an antibiotic and it will kill bacteria in your gut, could also kill good bacteria, causing a dysbiosis and that leads to leaky gut. So there's a lot of um, nuances to this argument. And I also think, you know, the people who argue we should be eating whole grain wheat and, and whatnot, there's a lot of different ways to get uh, fiber in the diet. And really just being plant-based, I think is really important. And there's a lot of really great gluten-free um, grains out there that can be used as a substitute. We had a, a one person write in about calcium, you know, and we're talking about dairy and eliminating dairy. And a lot of people instantly go to the place where I get calcium is dairy. And I know, you Thank know, you a lot about council. this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And in, in talking about that, uh, with this one woman who's over 50, she mentioned that she exercises, she eats well, but she's very concerned about osteoporosis. And yeah. are there ways to get the kind of calcium we need in our body without going to milk? Because she's not a milk drinker. Broccoli. Yes. Broccoli, dark leafy greens. Yeah. It's really, you have to think of it this way. You know, there is calcium in food that we can absorb. But more importantly, the amount of calcium in your bones is dependent on the acid-base balance of your blood. And if you're eating a really acidic diet that's low in plant-based foods, then you're going to leach calcium out of your bones in order to buffer the acid in the blood to keep the blood. The, the goal of the blood is to stay within a really narrow pH range. And the body will do that at the sacrifice of calcium in the bone in order to keep your blood uh, pH balanced. So one really important thing to do is to eat a plant-focused diet.
to really um, help keep that calcium in the bone. And of course, weight bearing exercise. And I have um, I have patients who are have osteoporosis, and I put them on a combination of you know anti-inflammatory diet, uh, making sure they're getting plenty of leafy greens. Um, sometimes supplementation with. Uh, type of calcium like hydroxyapatite that uh, helps build bone. And sometimes I also add uh, bone morphogenic proteins uh, in, as a supplement, uh, which has been proven to reverse osteoporosis on testing. And, and thus, and then adding in weight bearing exercise and another one. So I know we're talking gut, but look, okay. I, can talk, I can talk about it, anything. Uh, <laughs> Um, doing your exercise on a vibrational plate, they're called power plates. They, they vibrate and they send a vibration through your body and that vibration signals your bone to create new bone. And that's been proven to improve bone density in someone who's losing uh, po you know, post-menopausal uh, bone loss. So these are things to think about along with you know, rebalancing uh, the, gut, the gut microbiome and making sure to keep that well balanced, to keep the hormones balanced. What is your thought on <laughs> colon hydrotherapy? That was a question that that's came a, in. That's a good one. Uh, you know, that's something you don't want to overdo. And I know there's many different ways that colon hydrotherapy can be practiced. It could be, um, it should always be done low pressure. There are some that will use pressurized, uh, but it should be done really gently. And it can be a really great way to detoxify, but you don't want to become dependent on it to clear your colon. Uh, and you don't want to start doing it too regularly because it can start to wash out your microbiome. So you have to be careful with that. And I know colon hydrotherapists in New York that will infuse a probiotic infusion at the end, like a probiotic enema after doing the the colon hydrotherapy. So it can be useful. It can actually, it, um, I've seen it clear up skin, clear up acne. Again, it's so important to be eliminating on a daily basis. And this is funny because I put a, a TikTok video, um, I made a TikTok video on how to poop every day that went viral, hit 1.5 million views. And I had people writing in, even a doctor saying, no, you don't have to poop every day. And I'm like, are you nuts? Like that is one of the ways that we detoxify. And especially for women, if you're not pooping every day, you're going to become estrogen dominant. Oh, and you wow. Do not, you do not want to be estrogen dominant. Mm -hmm. So you need to be getting those toxins out of your body. And, you know, you can use colon hydrotherapy, but ultimately, I, I rather support the body in ways to be able to do it on its own, even if it's with some supplementation like triphala or magnesium, uh, trying to stay away from laxatives like Senna because then you can become dependent on that. Uh, but it's safe to use magnesium citrate, triphala, cape aloe. Aloe is a really great uh, for... Uh, women who suffer from severe constipation um, that can really help push the bowel movements or sometimes combination of these. Yeah, we're definitely talking about poop more these days. It's become more, <laughs> it's one of those words that we used to laugh at as a kid. Well, we're still laughing at as adults, but it really is a topic we need to feel comfortable talking about. And I learned a lot just from uh, people that I work with and and just in my, my tribe of, you know, integrative health that poop is Poop's important, you know? Poop is very Poop important. It's very important. <laughs> Hopefully it's leaving you and that's important. I mean, we and, need to talk about it. And anybody who's had a poop issue knows how important it is. <laughs> so let me ask you a, a question on your, on your own. Uh, what is your guilty pleasure or cheap food? Oh, God. Uh, one of my guilty <laughs> pleasures is avocado ice cream. Oh, so yes. dairy-free avocado-based ice cream. Uh, chocolate. That is one of my guilty pleasures. Chocolate also, like dark Wait chocolate. Is that in here? Is a, <laughs> is a guilty pleasure. Is that um, I, have, I have a recipe for, I don't have that recipe, but I have a recipe for these almond uh, hemp coconut balls that are really delicious yeah. in 
in my book. Um, that yeah, that's one of my my guilty pleasures. Uh, aside from uh, occasionally in New York, I can get some really great artisanal uh, gluten free beers from Belgium, and they are excellent. So once in a while, I love having one of those, like a dark uh, ale or an amber ale. Uh, so those are my those are my guilty pleasures. That still sounds um, pretty healthy, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's really not. Like I don't break. Uh, I used to break my my diet uh, on more occasions, but I just learned that, you know, for me being non celiac, gluten sensitive, it's not worth the price. And I've come to the point where the it doesn't even feel like deprivation to say that oh, there's, there's nothing, like if I'm out with friends and they want to order a dessert and none of the desserts are gluten-free, dairy-free, I can go without. Like I don't feel, I feel so well satisfied because I know I'm always giving my body the right nutrition that I don't feel that I, I need to have a treat like that. You know, if I'm going to have a treat, it's going to be avocado ice cream or like, a really good dark chocolate bar or something. Yes, dark something chocolate. Like that. Because there's always there's always people that have that sweet tooth. There is a sweet tooth. And I think that's one of the biggest questions I get asked with clients, uh, my health coaching clients is what's a what's a go-to sweet? And I'll say like a good dark chocolate, like bring it up to the above 70%. I'll even do the hundred percent sometimes, you know, you get very used to it because you're you taste something that's a regular everyday piece of chocolate that they sell in stores and you know it's just it's not as good right not to bring up labels and brands but uh yeah i think once your body gets used to it it doesn't crave that which isn't healthy for us but yeah and then when you have something that's really high in sugar yeah. like anybody who's gone through a sugar detox and you know there is that addiction to sugar mm -hmm. but when you have something that's really high in sugar you'll you'll notice uh, i would just say Check this. Check your your resting heart rate mm -hmm. before you eat something that is high in sugar. Have the treat, and then a few minutes later, check your resting heart rate, and it's probably gone up by anywhere between ten and twenty beats per minute because of the sugar. Huh? And that's a sign that of what it's doing to your body. It's mm. not. It's really not good for the body. Hmm. All right, let's close things out. I'd like to have a little fun with my guests. And what I want to do is just do a quick word association game with you, a rapid fire. And okay. uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw out a word of, that we talked about, something in our conversation. Just come back with one word that you associate with the word I'm throwing out at you, okay? Okay. You got this down. <laughs> you got this down. This is your thing. I feel like in one of those game shows. Yeah, well, that's what it is. I like to have a little fun with my guests. It's all about fun. There is health. There is humor in health, right? Okay. There should be. There should be, right. Here we go. Digestion. Elimination. Inflammation. <laughs> Deflation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Microbiome. The gut. Well, that's two words. <laughs> Throw me a bone. It's okay. I'll take the gut. I'll take gut. Okay. Uh, integrative. Medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Cleanse. Detox. Gut. Intuition. Poop. <laughs> what does that word always make me feel like I'm 12? Smelly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Maybe we should end on something else. How about functional? <laughs> uh, systemic. Oh, okay. I like that. Great. So... In closing, I'd love to know, and by the way, to listeners, I just want to let you know that Dr. Pedre has graciously offered a free download that you can find. It'll be on the Holistically Speaking website, the top 10 tips for a healthy, happy gut, 10 simple steps to be bloat-free in only 28 days. Hello. So you can focus on your happy, happy gut and pick up this book, peeps, pick up this book. So in closing, uh, what was, what is something you would like to share with listeners? Oh, God. Um, I've heard many stories of people who have suffered for, uh, you know, sometimes years uh, with gut issues or gut related health issues like skin rashes, hives, rosacea, eczema. Uh, and 
it's easy to give up and think like this is just going to be me for the rest of my life. Uh, but I encourage them because of the the transformations that I've seen, especially through the work that I've done, um, to not give up, to keep searching for the answers. Sometimes that might actually mean, you know, maybe it means picking up my book. Maybe it means doing the 20 day cleanse. Maybe it means finding a functional medicine trained practitioner or health coach to work with to really make yourself accountable. The most important thing is to know who you are and what is the best way for you to get done what you need to get done. Some people need a coach. Some people need accountability. Some people are really self-directed learners so they can just pick up a book and just do the program and they've got it. So, you know, really figure out who you are and be honest with yourself about that. And then Go after the help that you need, and hopefully this information helps you see that there, there are a lot more perspectives on how you can heal the body than what Western medicine would have us think. And not that Western medicine is bad. I think Western medicine is a complement to functional medicine, uh, but it doesn't have all the answers. Neither does functional medicine. And it's really somewhere in between in the marriage of the two that we come to the best way to help people achieve optimal health. Yeah, definitely. And I have to say, as a health coach, there's nothing I enjoy more than working with and aligning with doctors like yourself who are in functional and integrative medicine, because you see both sides. And I think it just it helps clients and patients just live a more empowered life. So thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Make sure you take advantage of Dr. Pedre's generous offer for Holistically Speaking listeners, a free download to the top 10 tips for a healthy, happy gut. 10 simple steps to being bloat-free in only 28 days so you can focus on your happy. You'll find that link to the download and more on the podcast page. And if you're looking to go from a happy gut to ways to be kind to your mind, get in touch with me for a complimentary discovery call. Just connect with me on my website at hillaryrusso.com. I'd love to support you on your healing journey and put the power of emotional well-being in your own hands. And be sure to stay in the know with me through social media, Clubhouse, and LinkedIn at Hillary Russo. Hearing from you makes me happy, right down to the gut. Holistically Speaking is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lip on Reading and recorded on Squadcast. Finally, all of this wouldn't be possible without listeners like you. So thanks. And until next time, be kind to your mind and your gut, and don't forget to laugh.